Hey guys, it's me, Menya Like Kenya, and today I want to get into a subject that I've wanted to talk about since I started shooting YouTube videos, and that subject is dating in Japan. The reason I haven't broached this topic until now is because, frankly, I'm married and it's obviously a little bit sensitive talking about my dating history and fun history. Uh, but what I want to do is give you guys a general idea as to what it's like to be a guy dating in Japan and the kind of spectrum that you'll be looking at if you are one of those people. So we'll just jump right in. What I mean by that spectrum is basically if you're a non-Japanese person living here in Japan, uh, the people you're going to be dating are on a spectrum. Assuming you're dating, let's just say women, you're on a spectrum of what I'd consider to be Japanese Japanese, which means maybe she doesn't speak any English, hasn't spent any time abroad, maybe isn't even really interested per se in um, you, you could say like the Western world or learning English or, you know, American movies, Western movies, whatever, to the opposite, which would be somebody who spent years living abroad, fluent in English, possibly went to college or other school years um, living abroad. And it's a pretty big spectrum. So for myself, I came in 2009 and I have dated slash had fun um, everywhere on this spectrum. <laughs> and... What I found quite quickly was that I really needed to be with somebody who's at least somewhere in the middle, if not on this side of the spectrum. And the reason being, there are so many little nuanced things like cultural references or movie references or memes that somebody, for example, on this side of the spectrum uh, simply will not understand, but somebody on this side will. And personally, I find that those are um, those kinds of jokes, whether they're inside jokes or quotes from movies or scenes from films or songs, that kind of connection is really important in a relationship. So I found that really I, it only made sense to really be with people who are, again, somewhere in the middle to this side. And Risa, my wife, is very much on this side. She's on the, you know, the furthest <laughs> end of this possible. She was born in Japan, but spent 16 years of her life in America. And so you know, she gets all the little things and that helps us work really well. Uh, her favorite kind of music is my favorite kind of music. Her favorite artist, you know, Brian McKnight. Her favorite movies, really similar movies. Um, how she likes to have fun, same as me. Obviously fitness, same. So we really connect on all those levels. But depending on the kind of person you are, really you can find success dating really anywhere on this spectrum. I would say most of my friends are similar to me. They really operate best with somebody who's in the middle to this side. But I know lots of people who are married to and have successful relationships with people who are very much on this side, meaning that all their interactions are in Japanese, you know, everything's in Japanese. Um, their references obviously must be in Japanese because that's kind of where they're both at. And that also works. It's just much more difficult because as you can imagine, as a non-Japanese person, you essentially have to be fluent in Japanese to really make that work on the far side. So again, I speak conversational Japanese, and so I can kind of make it work in the middle, but it's just so much easier to default to my natural language, which is English, and then work on this side of the spectrum. So more than anything, I wanted to just present this idea of there being a spectrum for you. So if you're interested in coming to Japan, let's say you're super into Asian women, if that's your thing. Um, prior to going to Japan, FYI, I had never dated an Asian girl prior to landing in Japan. So I did not come here by any stretch of the imagination to like find a wife or any of that. But plenty of people do, men and women. And if you happen to be one of those people, I mean, it's likely you're probably more on this side of the spectrum. You're interested much more in speaking Japanese and uh, probably interest, interested quite a bit in subculture and all that. Um, for myself, I came here because I just wanted to live abroad for a short period. And I've ended up finding, you know, I, I, ended, I ended up finding the most success in the middle slash on this side. So if you've got questions or if you're interested in hearing uh, some stories and I'm happy to divulge in uh, in a way that I can. <laughs> a friend of mine prior to shooting this video, when I told him I was going to shoot a video today on uh, relationships, he's heard some of my stories and he said, how are you going to possibly shoot a video on relationships? Because I've heard some of your stories and they're probably not okay <laughs> uh, to record. And he's right. So um, I really unfortunately can't get into too much. But for perspective, I spent my entire basically 20s here, young adult life, um, you know, partying, clubbing, all that stuff. And Tokyo slash Japan is an amazing country slash city. And if you're interested in coming here and like having a good time, um, it's an amazing place to do that. You can really 
you can really have fun um, along the spectrum, <laughs> if you will. So anyways, if you guys have questions, please drop them in the comments below. Um, if you want to know more about the spectrum or if you've got some like really specific questions about that, feel free to ask. But really the big picture is that if you're interested in dating in Japan, you don't necessarily need to even know any Japanese as long as you're dating on this side of the spectrum. But if you are interested in dating someone who's very Japanese, as I and some of the people I know would say is kind of Japanese Japanese, you're going to have to know the language because she slash he you know, is not going to know, uh, is likely not going to know English. So anyways, I hope that's helpful. If you guys are interested in knowing something different about dating, please feel free to reach out. I'm sure there are plenty of videos out there about dating in general, but I haven't seen this spectrum. So I thought I'd present that to you because along that spectrum are all the subculture groups like, you know, girls who are really into hip hop or, um, you know, professionals who are really into finding Western uh, men. Like there's, there are a lot of different kind of types along the spectrum, but I don't really want to get into all that because it gets, <laughs> um, although it's probably funny for YouTube, it might be more useful to just realize that there is a massive spectrum and really just depending on what you're interested in, you can find, you'll be able to find a partner, you know, somewhere on that spectrum. In closing, I will also just say that um, dating in general is hard, obviously. Uh, and I think as a Western person, so specifically as an American, dating in Japan um, can be particularly difficult, especially when you don't get it. And this wasn't something I was going to get into in this video because it relates more to like early stage dating slash like picking up people. But in general, it's a very different thing when you come from, for example, the States to Japan and you're trying to get a feel for people around you at clubs. Maybe you're going to school here at the office. Uh, it's kind of a different kind of vibe in Japan. It's hard to put in words. But just bear in mind, if you do at some point come to Japan, I think they're lifting the, um, the closed border in June, which is in about a month or two. Um, bear in mind, things are obviously different here. So if you do come here and you find yourself having trouble connecting with someone, um, there's a learning curve. And um, yeah, just, just take some time to kind of observe and kind of figure out what's going on around you and, you know, reach out and ask people, you know, how things get done here because it's very different than um, in the States. I'll give actually one example that I think might be interesting. Basically in the U.S., if you like someone, man or woman, you will look the person in the eyes and you'll both kind of do that thing where you look at each other and you know. It's hard to put that in words, but in Japan, that doesn't really happen. Most women in particular, when you make eye contact, they'll look down or away because they're just too shy. And that's not because they don't like you or not interested. It's just a completely different thing. So, I mean, I remember landing here in 2009 and like making eye contact with like everyone I thought I would be interested in and they all looked away all the time. And I couldn't help but be like, what is like, what is wrong with me? But it just took some time to realize that things are a little bit different here. And that's a perfect example of something that's culturally very different, um, for example, in the U.S. versus Japan. So anyways, if you have questions, drop in the comments below. I'm happy to, again, divulge uh, in a PG context. But um, if you shoot me a private message somewhere, I'm happy to get into details about, you know, some of the randomness and fun that is Tokyo. But otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you next week. Thank you.